So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a full page loader for your application and have that full page loader be responsive and centering the animation that you are using. So if I uh, go ahead and just drop my page size down, you should see how that stays centered there. And then if I am taking my page height and bringing that up, you can see how it's staying centered. So a completely centered full page loader. I am using a Lottie files animation here. I have other video that is focused on how do you use Lottie animation. So we are not going to be focusing on that. You can go ahead and check out the other video to get the information on how you can get access to Lottie files and use them inside of your bubble app. And we are focusing on this with the new responsive engine by bubble. I was pretty excited to be able to see that this does work. There are a few drawbacks at the moment because it doesn't do or give me the sort of flexibility I really wanted from it. But at the very least, we get to have a completely centered full page loader. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. Okay, so inside of your bubble app, you're going to go ahead and start off by creating a reusable edit element. So add a new reusable element. I'm going to just go ahead and label this. And let's make sure I've got an ER so I know what it is. I'm going to go ahead and press create. All right, so now that I've got this, I do need to go in and check off the upgrade to new responsive. And then once that is done loaded up, I will be able to set up my reusable element to work the way I need it to. So first thing that I'm going to end up doing is setting that reusable element to be a type of floating group. I, I will leave it floating relative to top. That's not going to really make any difference. Uh, and once I have that set up, I want to make sure that my background color would be matching the color of my app in the event that I want it to be something different than just white. Uh, so make sure you choose your color on the element there. In the layout here, the layout is actually going to be aligned to parent because I want to make use of the non-ints, as Bubble is referring to these, uh, to be able to get it into the right position. I'm going to just put the, the width at 300 here, and I'm going to leave the min width at zero, and here as well with the min height, I'm going to put it at zero. Okay, so I, at this moment, it's a little bit jarring to see like that I don't have anything and it seems like everything's collapsed on, on itself. Uh, what I will be needing to do is to add into here an HTML element. So I'm going to go ahead and just find the HTML element and let me just draw it out. And you can see what ends up happening. You see the canvas come back. And so basically the settings that we had on that reusable within the layout with min width and min height at zero causes it to collapse until you get some kind of a element inside of there. Uh, using the non-ants, I want to center this. That's why I'm going to uh, make use of it. So it will always stay centered. And now here on my, my width, I'm going to go with 320. And I'm going to go ahead and say that the height is 320 as well. And that's going to be based around the size of my Lottie files to make sure as well that I do not have any kind of uh, scroll bars applied to them. It's kind of a weird thing in Bubble with HTML elements. They sometimes have scroll bars applied, uh, even though you maybe have your width and height settings on it that are uh, larger than the file itself. So the other things too, I want to make sure that the fixed width and the fixed height, this is important to make sure that it would not be expanding uh, any more than it actually needs to. So I have already my Lati files uh, script. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that into my appearance with a paste. And so now that that's in there, we can actually see the Lati files come up immediately. Uh, and so I've got my Lati files all set up there. So that is really all I need to do inside of my reusable element. And then I need to be able to make sure I can put this onto a page. And so I'm going to now go into add a new page and I'm going to label this page. So let's go ahead and say loader live test and let's create that page. Again, I'm going to have to come in and uh, set my responsive to be using the new 
uh, responsive engine. And once I have that uh, set up, I'm gonna need to get my, my page layout put together. And I want my page layout to be of a type column. And so once I have this ready for it, layout is going to be a column. And that's just because I'm gonna end up expecting for other elements that I may add to the page to need the custom, or sorry, the column. Um, and so that's why I'm choosing that. It really doesn't have much to do with this full page loader. And then I'm gonna put my width of 1200 and a height of 600 just to have that space to work with. So once I have that set up on the page itself, I just need to drop in there my full page loader. So I'm gonna quick type in for loader and I'm gonna get the loader live. I'll just click onto the uh, canvas and let it get in there. It's kind of strange in this new responsive engine, it takes quite a while for your reusable elements to kind of show up on the page after you've clicked on the page to draw it, uh, but it is what it is. I, so at this point now, I need to adjust the actual reusable element itself. And it does come through as a floating group. And so in the appearance here, we can see these sort of floating group controls. I need to focus though on the layout. And first thing I'm gonna do is change these to percentage. And I'm gonna make them 100%. And so now that they are 100%, you can see how that kind of drops down to fill up the space that is available to that element now. I, But we're not actually able to kind of visualize the image itself getting centered. But that's just an issue that I've been experiencing with this new responsive engine. It does not really render things very well, especially when those elements are inside of reusables and you're viewing the page where the reusable is actually placed. I, so maybe it's something we're gonna have to get used to, or maybe Bubble will be seeing it as a bug and, and try to resolve that for us. I, so otherwise, I've got my max width set to infinity and max height set to infinity. So that's all I need to do here. I, so right now I should be all set to preview this page and see how it renders when it is uh, brought into the preview mode. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of the debugger here and get that out of my URL. So this will refresh on us again. And you can see it looks like it is centered and if I start to play with my width, I keep it as centered there. And if I bring that back out, it will stay centered. And if I can grab onto the height of my page here, I can bring the height up and you can see it's staying centered. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, easy setup, much easier than it ever had been in the previous engine, uh, which required a lot of kind of custom code to try to figure out how to get it centered and that uh, for me, it was a nightmare. There were probably some other ways that you could have done it with plugins and such, but you know, trying to make as best use of Bubble as you can and just use native Bubble. Uh, this is really cool, in my opinion. A couple of drawbacks here, though, um, is that from my testing so far, I, you cannot really have this work properly by putting it into another reusable element. Uh, you would have to be putting them onto the page. So if you only have a single page app, that's great. You only got to put it in one spot. If you have multiple pages, you're going to need to set things up uh, to be able to accommodate for that fact. Now, one thing that you could probably do here uh, is, let's see if we have the workflow to be able to show itself. I would be setting up a, a custom event and this custom event would be element actions and show. And what I would want to do here is actually show the loader live. So what this is, is something that Bubble will allow you from the page that you put the uh, loader onto to actually have this custom trigger available to you from the page. Otherwise you would just need to on each page uh, show the loader live from there. And in any instance, 
uh, you will be needing to, from the page, actually set things up to have on pages loaded uh, that actual reusable element that's on the page to be shown, the loader live. Uh, so if I wanna make this loader live uh, not visible by default, I just have to come in here, element is not visible on page load and uncheck that. Uh, and then from there, I'll be able to make it visible when I give the command through the workflow to make it visible. And you'll need to set up the commands in the workflows to be able to hide it when the data is fully loaded. I, and what you might wanna do there is run this, uh, do when condition is true, make it every time, do it when the page uh, loaded entire is yes, and set it off to be able to element actions and hide uh, that loader live. I'm thinking right now out loud as I'm doing this and I'm, I'm looking at the concept of putting on the loader live, the uh, general workflow on itself. Uh, so do when condition is true every time and do they give us page page loaded entire is yes. So we have access to it there. So that's, that's good. You can actually end up hiding uh, this on itself inside of that reusable element. You wouldn't need to take the extra steps on every single page where you would possibly use it uh, to hide it when the page is loaded as entire as yes. That's good. So that takes away uh, one extra step and makes it so it's not as inconvenient to not be able to put this into another reusable element. What I wanted to originally do was in my um, header, I, I wanted to put inside the header that loader element, which is a floating group. And um, it just causes issue. And I'm not sure if that's something that Bubble would be able to resolve and make it so that we could uh, put it into a reusable header, because that would be fantastic. I, but yeah, at the moment, what ends up happening is there's a scroll bar on your header and it doesn't fill up the entire page as it would if you just dropped it onto the page itself. So some things to think about when, when implementing this, but I hope it was helpful for you to be able to see a little bit how the new responsive engine gives us a little bit more power that we didn't have before, uh, less need on some custom code to get some better designs inside of the Bubble app. Uh, so let me know uh, in the comments how you think uh, this is and maybe some other ways about implementing it to get rid of some of the drawbacks around the concept of not having it inside of another reusable element and needing to put it onto different pages. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.